In this episode, I'm going to show you how to set up Visual Studio to use SDL. So here I am at libsdl.org, and I'm going to click on the SDL version 1.2 download link. And we need both runtime libraries and development libraries. So I'm going to click on the Visual C++ development libraries to download that, as well as the Win32 32-bit version of the runtime libraries. If I can open up the download folder, show in folder, and you can see here I have already downloaded these and unzipped them by clicking, right clicking and clicking extract all. So now let's open up Visual Studio. I have Visual Studio Professional 2012, but this will work the same for Express. So I'm going to click File new project and start an empty project and I'm just going to call this SDL test. Now that the project's been created I'm going to open the folder in the file explorer. I'll copy over our development libraries to this folder. I'm going to open up the project properties and then look under Visual C++ directories, which is under the configuration properties. Once there, I can set the include directories by clicking this down arrow and clicking edit. This will bring up a pop-up. We can add new, we can add new with new line uh, icon and then click the dot dot dot. I'll navigate into the include folder inside of the SDL. Hit OK. Now I need to set up the library directories too. Same kind of thing. Click on the arrow, click edit. It'll bring up a pop up. New line, dot dot dot. Navigate to the lib folder. Now I have two choices, x64, and this would work if I had the 64-bit runtime libraries, but since I have the 32-bit runtime libraries, I'm going to use x86. Next we need to adjust the linker. So if I click on linker and select the input tab, I can double click on additional dependencies click edit and add in sdl.lib separated by a semicolon followed by sdl and in lowercase main.lib again followed by a semicolon next under system we're going to set subsystem to be windows I can click OK. This should be all we need to set up in order to compile SDL programs. Let's test this by adding a simple program. I'll right click on SDL test and click add new item. This will be a CPP file and I'll call it main.cpp. We'll start by including SDL. and we'll create a main. This is going to be a very simple test. We'll just create, we'll just initialize and then quit. So we'll start by calling SDL init with SDL init everything and then call SDL quit immediately after. So let's build this. Before we, before we can run this, we need to copy over our sdl.dll file into our debug directory. So let's open our sdl test in the file explorer and go up one level. 
don't be confused by a debug file inside of the SDL test folder that we open. We want to go up one level and use that debug folder. This is where our application is. We can copy this SDL.dll over to our application folder. Now we can run the application just by double clicking. We didn't get an error so we know that it did, that it did indeed work, but I'll show you that we can run, rebuild and run again. I do have one final note. If you're working with Linux, people who are using Linux on this project, their include is going to be a little bit different. They're going to be pound including SDL slash SDL dot H. And they're going to do that for all of the SDL uh, libraries. It'll be preceded by an SDL folder name. So in order to maintain compatibility with them, it will be easier to just add all of our files in the include into a subdirectory called SDL. So I opened up our SDL test folder and I'm going to go into SDL develop and into our include folder. And inside of our include folder, I'll create a new folder called SDL, all capitals. Then I'll select everything except for SDL and move it into SDL. Now we can use this, now we can use the Linux style of pound includes where it's preceded by the folder name. This isn't necessary, but it's helpful. Thanks for watching.